<laughs> All right. Looks like uh, allegedly we're up. I'm going to check to make sure the feed is going somewhere. And uh, I don't know. Okay. All right. I'm going to give people a second to log log in and log on, and uh, then I'm going to get started. Actually, I'm going to... Tea looks a little hot. We'll see what happens here. Okay. That is... Um... Uh -oh. That's green tea. I don't think that's a good thing to drink right now before... I'm just late in the game. Okay. So um, thank you so much for, for joining me in this video. And um, I'm, I'm going to get right into it. I don't want to waste your time. If you're here, I want you to get as much benefit as possible. So the, the number one uh, question that I want to answer right off the bat is, is this video for you? Is this, is this workshop for you? Is this series for you? So I want to help uh, hone in and zero in on um, the particular fitness struggle that we want to talk about and spend our time talking about over the next few days. So, the you know in terms of you know your fitness results, your health, and your long term um, vitality and um, staying lean and and whatever your definition of of healthy and fit is, to some degree, uh, this workshop is for you if if you can relate to this statement. I know what to do, but I just can't make myself do it or do it for not, or I can't make myself do it for very long. So if that's you, then you're in the right place. And today we're going to expand on that statement a little bit. We're going to go a little bit deeper. We're going to identify some of the problems that come into play when you're talking about long-term behavioral change and how to address them. And I'm going to give you the answer, the one simple uh, magic bullet that I believe is the only and best way to get in shape quickly and stay there for the rest of your life. So I'm going to share all those ideas with you. Um, but before we go further, I want your permission to, uh, number one, I like to swear. So when I get really excited, I sometimes drop the F-bomb or use a little bit of profanity. So if you're offended by crass language or foul language, then I apologize in advance and um, you can always just mute me whenever you want um, or log off. So the number one thing is I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be using uh, some adult language when I get really fired up. I'm gonna try and, and, and keep it together, but that's the number one thing that I wanted to share with you and, and perhaps you. Number two is this is participatory. So whether you're on your workbook or a blank sheet of paper, I want you to be writing down um, your story and, and the struggles and the obstacles that you are um, facing. So please, 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 I'll give you a moment uh, when, we're, when we get into this uh, to share or to um, uh, hear case studies and stories, and my uh, origin story as well. And, you know, you don't have to uh, be like me. You may not relate to everything that I'm saying, but... I want you to uh, jot down how this has shown up in your life when we get into it. And you'll know what I mean when we get there. So a little bit of profanity, but a lot of participation from you. All right. So uh, we talked about the, if you're here, if you're in the right spot, it's because you know what to do in order to get in shape, but you can't make yourself do it, or at least can't make yourself do it for very long. And that's really, <clears throat> that's really the launching point for um, uh, most of this workshop because inside of that, that sentence, that idea is a perspective that might be a little frozen or a little bit skewed in the past. It also might, might be a little bit disempowering in terms of the perspective that you take on. There could be some flawed logic there. So one of the things that's true when we think about that statement, uh, I know what to do, but I can't make myself do it. We think about the fact that there's a, a thing that has worked for you in the past that has 
uh, that, that got you good results. And, you know, I'm not, you know, it could be you did a ketogenic diet that worked really well, or the whole 30, or you were vegan, or you were in college and you were on the coffee and cigarette diet. You know, that's a, that's a famous one. And again, I'm not bad mouthing any of these programs or any of those diets, but the, uh, you know, these stories all have in common the idea that there's only one way for you to get results and to feel good in your body and to feel fit. And it's that specific magical thing that you had your hands on at one point, but have it, your hands on it no longer. That is the reason why you can't be in shape today. So maybe you were successful in the whole 30 for a period of time, but you couldn't maintain it. And when you go back, all kinds of problems arise and friction. Another uh, problem with that um, that statement and, th and those ideas of, I know what to do, but I can't make myself do it, is this um, kind of binary thinking or all or nothing. Like I'm all the way in, I'm all the way on, or I'm all the way off. So it's like, I'm either gluten-free or I'm not getting results. I'm either you know counting every calorie or I'm not in shape. And there's, there's a couple of additional, you know, struggles that, and, and obstacles that come with those things. When you're all in or all out, there's this uh, additional mentality of the situation and the environment has to be perfect. And what I mean by that is like the circumstances of your time management or the, the burdens placed upon you. Like, you know, you, you got to, used to get off work at four o'clock every week and, or every day, and you would have time to work out before you, you headed home beat traffic, but you've been working later hours, longer hours, and you can't get back to that schedule anymore. I may say back to that. I just mean that, uh, that the, the perfect situation in the past, you haven't been able to recreate. And that's that, uh, that kind of logic, and we all do it, and I've done it, and I'm going to share with you my story in a minute. But what that does is it, it fixates us on things we might not be able to control because you may not be able to control when you're done with work or when you have to drop the, the kids off at, at school and kind of makes you the victim of your environment, right? Because if there's a one thing you can't control, then you're kind of off the hook for being, <laughs> that's right, it's going perfectionism totally hinders change, absolutely. But if you're focused on that one thing that you can't control, then you're off the hook for making any other changes. So that, that binary perfectionist thinking, um, that is, this ideal situation is holding up on a pedestal this time in the past when we were very successful that we're trying to get back to, or even worse, waiting for the situation to change. When work comes down, when the kids go back to school or get out of school, or when I get done with my degree or when this project is over at work. And, but what comes after that? School year starts again, you get promoted, more responsibility, more stress, more change, and things, things continue in the same roller coaster up and down vein uh, for the duration. And the final thing about this, if you think, I said roller coaster, but if you think about you know, the highs, the, the peaks and the valleys of a roller coaster, um, what comes to mind is like measuring the uh, amount of effort that you put out, right? So when effort is high, my results are high, but when effort, you know, when effort drops or motivation drops and, and so does my health results. But that sort of ties into this really toxic um, link between effort and results. And I'm not saying that you don't have to exert discipline and try to get in shape and stay in shape. What I know is that uh, effort is, is almost the enemy in this situation. We're going to get into this a lot more detail. I don't want to hit you with a bunch of vague ideas, but I want to get really specific. But it equates this idea of I have to try really hard and maybe I have to give up some things and even suffer through some things in order to get what I want and to get in shape. And I'd like or I'd have you consider that there might be an easier way. And this isn't magical thinking. This is something I've seen work time and time again to, to take the stress off the, the 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 health and fitness process and make your life easier, make you enjoy it, which ultimately keeps you on the path for longer and keeps you looking and feeling good. So right now, um, what what I want you to do, if you have a piece of paper or your workbook, 
in the first slot in your workbook, or if you have a blank piece of paper, write down when you know that statement. Um, I know what to do, but I can't make myself do it. Just write down what that means for you. And I'm going to share some case studies and some ideas about um, places where people have been stuck in the past or fixated on those things. And you, you'll, you're going to get some ideas from them. But for you, I want you to have whether it was you know a lifestyle, a diet, a workout program, a gym that like really worked for you. Hashtag training four years for life, TFW Portland. Whatever it was that was really that was really that time in that place. I want you to describe it in detail. Where were you? How old were you? What were you doing? You know, what was life like? Um, you know, what were your inputs like? Maybe you did the whole thirty, and so you were um, making sure there were no FODMAPs in your food. Maybe you were um, vegan, and so there was all plant based. Whatever it is, write it down for you. Get out the the, the key ideas, and I'll give you a second to do that, but. At the end of the at the end of this talk, I'm going to give you a chance to speak up and share some of those some of those things, and and I'll help you link up some of, some of the good ideas that you had, and take some of the friction off the the changes that you want to make. That's what I that's what I want to do for everybody. And again, we're going to go through this and and share some things that have worked for other people in the past. And when you solve this problem of um, of you know being on the roller coaster or trying to make yourself win or uh or linking up you know suffering with results what happens is effort goes down results go up fitness becomes sustainable <laughs> your relationships benefit your quality of life improves because you can do more things you feel better you have more fun you're liberated to enjoy those those activities that you like so much your confidence goes up and your pride and sense of self and happiness goes up as well. Now, am I saying that, you know, you need to have abs and, you know, uh, or, you know, build on 20 pounds of muscle to be happy? Absolutely not. In fact, it certainly won't make you happy, but it will instill in you, whatever your goals are, a sense of pride in yourself and confidence that you can do what you set out to do and look and feel your best all the time. So those are the, that's what I want for you. That's ultimately what I want everyone to take away from this workshop. And I want to help you get there in less than an hour. So the big idea that we're going to get into is habits, right? You are what you repeatedly do. Excellence, therefore, is not an action, but a habit. And our goal today is to end this moral, like good versus bad, or transactional, like tit for tat view of health. Like I'm good when I do the things, I'm bad when I'm not. It, it's good to eat these kind of foods. These kind of foods are bad. And instead, fully embrace the fact that our health is a result of one and one thing only, which is our habits. So those are the the actions that become skills, the skills that become practices, and the practices that. We habitualize into the rituals of our life. So today I'll be making the case for these and how they take away the friction, the pain from your fitness journey. So you don't have to ride that roller coaster. You don't, you're not hooked to that old story. That's my that's why I'm teaching this. And and the reason why I'm speaking about this is because I have been very passionate about health and fitness for the last 20 years. I used to work as a special populations physical trainer in the army. And when I got out of the army, I worked with civilians uh, here in Portland, Oregon for gosh, 15, 16, 17 years now. Oh my God, I'm old or I'm aging. But whether they're athletes or not, whether they're military or civilian, old or young, um, in great shape, morbidly obese, the results are the same or the, uh, the outcomes are the same. When we focus on habits and long-term thinking, the amount of effort that goes into those, that, that goes into the outcomes, that goes into the program goes down and the amount of joy and uh, success and a uh, sense of ease goes up. Now, that doesn't mean it's not comfortable. That does mean that it is easier. I'm gonna have a drink of coconut water so that I can continue to talk. Okay. So 
And if you're wondering whether or not this actually works, if you've seen my website or even some of the before and afters on the, on the page that you clicked on to get here or the videos that I've shared, then you'll know that it absolutely works and it works um, for a variety of people in a variety of circumstances. And it worked for me and that's how I got out of the rut that I had been in, suffering from chronic back pain and fatigue and just, I was an absolute wreck and an absolute mess for a long, a long, long time. And discovering all this is how I got, I got some momentum and I got to change my mindset and I got to feel good. And that made me very excited to share this with you. So the, 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 the person that generated this whole talk and the, the story, I'm gonna anonymize her because She's a, a <laughs> she's a famous entrepreneur. She's in the fastest fashion industry and I haven't gotten authorization to share a story yet, but she was a client of mine who is a, was an attorney leaving to start her company. And she, one, is um, a very, um, you know, ambitious, uh, high powered type A personality. And she's entering an industry that is you know, very aesthetically driven. So she, she wants to look the part. She wants to be more confident in her body. And she's also had a lot of struggles along the way. And one of the things that's very clear to me is I have been in this industry for 20 years and worked with probably 70% women, just a lot of women over the last 20 years, is women are way tougher than me because they, I routinely hear things that I've heard her say, which is the only thing that works for me is I just can't eat. So she had already decided uh, for herself that the only way that she was going to get in the kind of shape that she wanted was to stop eating, maybe go down to one meal a day, like less than 800 calories and sustain that for weeks and months at a time. And I, I hear these things and my heart breaks. My heart, heart broke for her because she was dead serious. She was very motivated and she was very convinced that there wasn't any alternative for her. And she was also very combative. And I shared with her some other strategies and some ideas that, uh, that, that might help her move forward. But she, she fought me on all of them. And if you've ever argued with an attorney, you know it's kind of a pain in the ass. Everything has to be data-driven. Um, I, I made her a meal plan. And she whipped out a calculator. And she, she dug through every one of her meals and did the math to make sure that the amount of calories was low enough for her to actually lose weight and lose weight consistently. And it wasn't as aggressive as she, she wanted, but it was as aggressive as I felt ethical, um, ethically that we could go as a coach. But every step of the way was questioning, was pushed back, was why are we doing this? Why aren't we doing that? And she was very tired. She was very, her body was beat up. She had injuries. She had muscle soreness. She had trained really, really hard and pushed herself through many different programs, many different very popular workout programs and gyms, and nothing ever stuck. And in her mind, it was because she hadn't sustained the effort long enough or worked hard enough or hell and tight enough or not eaten enough. She was, she was so worried that she wasn't exerting enough, exerting enough willpower and effort that that was what was holding her back. And that was the furthest thing from the truth. So the reality was, is that she'd been slamming that, that, that car into fifth gear for so long that what she needed was a mindset adjustment and a little bit of strategy. That's right, 800 calories a day. And this was an athlete, somebody who should have been probably eating three times as many calories, but that's okay. We work with what we got and we start where we're at. So she suspended different disbelief. She took action. She integrated a moderate exercise program, started to eat a little bit more than she was comfortable with, and do some mobility work, go for walks, bring the stress levels down, nutrition up, and over the next six weeks, it wasn't even a long time. That's the thing is she'd been struggling for years, but in the next six weeks, she lost about 18 pounds, looked great, and... Uh, she was getting, you know, her whole goal was to fit into a wedding dress, which she nailed. Like she nails everything. She's a boss. But 
So those are those are the conceptions that she had. She had to work harder, eat less. Uh, effort was the the willpower and effort was the the metric was the measure of success for her, how hard it was. And and I could totally relate because that was my story too. The reason why I, I teach this stuff is because I am. Um, I struggle with fitness my whole life as well. I was a skinny, I'm a skinny kid. <laughs> I was uh, naturally just not super, not super built, as they say in Roseburg, Oregon, where I'm from. So, and the <laughs> Roseburg is a, it's a small town in Southern Oregon. And if you've never been there, um, every, every kid is like a corn fed Iowa lineman. The, you know, the average weight of our football team was around 230 pounds. It was, kids were huge. Now I was very skinny. I was about 130, 140 pounds when I was in high school and I always felt small, but I also suffered from, you know, a lot of ailments. I had back pain. I can give you the diagnosis that I ended up um, getting later on with, with that, but I had chronic back pain, chronic fatigue. I was skinny. Always, always, always. I wanted to build muscle, you know, look buff, look like an action, you know, an action hero. And it, it never happened for me, but my route, the thing that had always made me successful in other areas of my life, whether it was the army or school or business, was always just work harder. So I applied that to fitness and I felt successful for a short period of time, but honestly, I just got beat up, more tired, and continued to move further away from my goals. And finally, after a few years of beating my head against the wall, uh, I read a book that had a, a simple nutrition plan and a workout that, that went with it. And it, it switched the game for me because as my effort went down in the gym and went up supporting in supportive habits, everything changed for me. I enjoyed the gym more. I actually uh, had fun, you know, working out and I got better results. And, and it was, it was so counterintuitive. It was so fast for me to switch that I was, I was kind of shocked. And I didn't really, I didn't really understand it or believe it. But after doing this for you know another 10, 12 years after that moment, I um, I'm I'm now fully I've, I've got full buy-in. I'm fully uh, I'm fully appreciative of the power of habit over the power of effort. So if you've been following along, hopefully, whether you you've had uh, you know. Uh, your goals are to lose weight or to build muscle or to, you know, transform your body in some way. Hopefully you have, um, you've written down some of the obstacles or some of the stories that you've carried forward. And um, if you, if you feel comfortable sharing them in the chat box, share them with me and I'll, uh, I'll talk about the, I'll talk about them. I'll may, maybe I'll ask you some questions to flesh it out a little bit, but I'll share with you some of my, um, uh, some of the mindsets that I had uh, that, that were holding me back that I've seen hold back a lot of a lot of clients that I've worked with in the past. And one of them for me has always been, I think I talked about it with, you know, the uh, my my first case study, I call her Jane. But it's the idea that effort is effort is the is how you produce results, that more effort equals more results. And that was never true for me. I mean, you, you do have to show up, you do have to actually work hard. But ultimately, the, the harder I tried, almost the further back that I went in my own fitness program. And I developed soreness, injuries, and also just, I just stopped like, I stopped liking the gym. And it made me very, uh, it was, as a fitness professional, it was very difficult to get through that period of time where I felt like I was only moving backwards and things weren't working for me. And the other, th the other thing that I think um, I carried forward was that the idea that suffering was part of part of fitness that you had to do without whether it's you know sugar or you know fat or carbs or alcohol or whatever the whatever the sacrifice was that you had to you had to let go of things that you enjoyed um, things that you enjoyed very much and and you weren't able to have fun and because I, I always felt that you know suffering was part of how you how you grew as a person that fit very well with my, my, my narrative at the time of the world. It was, it was a dark time for everybody. But because of that, uh, it held me back in fitness because fitness was a slog. It was a struggle for me. 
And I always equated that with, you know, the light at the end of the tunnel that there was going to be, you know, there, I was going to turn the corner and get better results, but they never panned out. Like I said, I continued to move backwards and I continued to get further and further behind, the, you know, away from what I wanted behind the eight ball. So I don't know uh, if you have any, uh, uh, anything you want to share if you're watching and, I can, you, and you can get into that chat box, but uh, type in any of the stories or the ideas that, that you, that have helped you be successful maybe in the past or that you equate to success in the past, but haven't been helping you move forward at, from this point on. And if you, uh, if you don't make this, if you're on the replay, type them into the, into the Facebook group or just send them to me in a message and I'll, po I'll post a video in the Q and A section tomorrow um, addressing those things because um, it's, it's very common to, to have these narratives that, that holds us back. I have so many more, but I want to get to, I'm going to get further down the road here. Okay, most comments to some destination. I'm learning about how to do this as I do it. It's a lot of fun. So again, skills, habits, and rituals are the simplest, most effective, easiest, and ultimately most sustainable way to get further down to get you to get your fit to get your health on track and to stay on track and this is becoming widespread knowledge and like i said you know my website's full of success stories but the most successful nutrition company in the world versus nutrition has a little over a quarter million testimonials as of this year and and counting they've been around they've been in business for 15 18 years something like that and the the average person in their program is on a on a plan for about 18 months 18 months that's a long-term program that's certainly not a um, a six-week challenge or a whole 30 or you know the, uh, a 90 days on the p90x nothing not not disparaging any of those programs but the idea of a day a week versus a month or a year it there you know it's those <laughs> the contrast is having the, the long-term view of practicing skills to make the changes versus front-loading effort to make the change is becoming the norm in the fitness industry. And I hope that in 20 years, we don't remember all of the, uh, the short-term solutions that we, that we tried uh, to get in shape. If I just, uh, Jocelyn sh is sharing, if I just push harder, put more time into the workout, I will get leaner. Yes. Yeah. Oh, totally. I've absolutely been there. And that's sort of how fitness marketing is, right? It's like a, uh, the fitness industry, at least um, the workout industry is a $16 billion industry. And the pictures, if you just Google some some fitness programs, the pictures are insane, like extreme shred workout, right? And they have people doing step ups and lunges without their shirts on, obviously, because who wants to work out with the shirt on? But the idea that um, you can train your way into into fitness is certainly, you know, along along the lines of the media. And if you if you secretly suspect that it's all part of a plot to keep people buying programs and products, you might be right. Like there, that it might be part of a uh, informal conspiracy to keep people on the treadmill for longer. But that's right, Jocelyn. That's a common one, and and it's uh, it's certainly easy to get you know confirm those those stories and stereotypes by media and even some trainers and, and fitness people on you know Instagram or you know on social media. So you're you know that's that's a hundred percent. The one that I, I I connect to with that is always like. Uh, the the heavier I lift, this is with weight training, right? Like the heavier that I lift and the the harder I work, the the bigger the muscles, right? Like the more that I'm going to get from from my workouts. Became a power lifter and just continued to lift the heaviest and most crazy and ridiculous things on the planet, and had a lot of fun, by the way. I'm not saying it's not fun, but I'm um, continued to pound myself year after year after year, and also, believe it or not didn't get the results. So, so you're in good company. But the, the moral of the story is to reduce all that friction and that driving and that pain and pounding 
mentality around, you know, health and fitness and sustainability by focusing on habits and skills, practice over effort, you take away some of that, some of that struggle and the roller coaster becomes more of a smooth ocean wave. And that's where we want to be. <laughs> that's right. Jocelyn, it's good. I feel like you've, um, you, you've, you've got a lot of the, you've got a lot of my um, takeaways here. So habits are free. There's no cost associated with eating slower, setting a bedtime, managing stress, planning ahead. There's, uh, they're free. There's no downsides and no consequences. You can't overtrain a habit. The better you get at it, the, the better the results that you produce, whatever you're working on, whether it's a movement skill, you know, even how well you do a push-up. that's a habit too. That's a skill that you practice. And eventually you become a perfect push-up over time. So there's very low downside. And a lot of times people will argue, well, Josh, I get it, but what the F are you talking about? What habits are you talking about? I'm going to give you all the habits. I'm going to give you all the secrets in video too. We're going to talk about the strategies and we're going to tie them to your goals and what you want to get out of it. So I'm going to tailor the whole video to the attendees and I'm going to share with you my best stuff. Anyway, my favorite things. So I'm going to give you all the habits and the other, the other pushback I get on that, the other objection I get on that is I don't have the time. I need a short-term quick fix solution because I need to get in shape. Now I've got a, a family reunion. I've got a high school reunion. I've got a wedding. I'm just, I just need to change. I'm so tired of looking and feeling this way that I have to change now. And I, I fully understand that argument. That makes sense to me. However, that mentality is the reason why some of you are still struggling with the same goals and the, losing the same five pounds, or you're gaining, losing, gaining, losing the same five pounds over and over again for a period of years. So you're already spending the time. You're spending the time spinning your wheels. You're spending the time eating anyway. You're spending the time sleeping anyway. You're spending the time training anyway. So if you're already going to spend that time, why not invest it into your skill set and improving your habits so that your results compound and that the strategies work together and synergize, to use a, a fun word that I don't use often enough, to synergize. And your stress goes down as your results go up over a longer period of time. <gasps> That's what I'm selling. That's what I'm selling. Habits. They're free. All right. So what I want you to do now that we're towards the end of this video is <laughs> I want to have it. Yes. <laughs> you're going to get them, Jocelyn. You're going to get all of them. So write out your goals, write out your biggest obstacles, setbacks, and struggles. And if you're, if you already have the workbook that you downloaded on the directory page or you, or, or if you don't have that email me and I'll give it to you, um, write out the, the story. So the, I know what to do, write down the, the things that you are attached to in your mind about what you must do to get in shape and the struggles and the setbacks and the obstacles that get in your way. These are the constraints that we're going to talk about and the habits that I'm going to share with you in the next video and the next workshop are going to be the ones that uh, address these very things and help you right now this week, feel better, look better, be more confident, lower your stress and help you have fun while you're on the path to get into where you want to go. It might be a little counterintuitive. It might not be necessarily easy. It could be simple, but not easy. And that's okay with me. But the important thing is that you have an idea of what your obstacles, setbacks, and problems are. That way, we're, we're focusing on your particular constraints and the things that are most valuable to you. So make sure that you write them down. Post them to the group. Um, send them to me. Message me. Um, you can post them here. But the most important thing is that you share them um, with me. I've got some of yours already. If you're in the group, you already had to answer some questions. So I've got some of the um, biggest pieces from at least 80% of you already. But share them. If you had any ahas or revelations in this talk, 
Um, I want you to write them down and share them with me so that we can go deeper on them in video two and you can get everything that you want from this program. <sighs> ah, There's a lot of talking all in a row. But the whole thing is identifying your, your story, your struggle, and understanding that even though it's counterintuitive, habits and skills are the solution to your, to your woes. Do, does anybody have any questions about um, what might be holding them back? Jocelyn, that's for you. I love talking, but man, it makes me thirsty. Okay. Awesome. Well, we're going to talk about the we're going to talk about the <laughs> we're going to talk about the effort paradox and what to do about that and how that relates to your your fitness and where to go next. But the important thing is is that um, you're aware of them that you're that you're that you're sharing them or that you've already shared them and you have. So thank you. If you're catching this on the replay, type your comments and uh, and your questions in the Facebook group, and I'll answer them there. I'll shoot a video tomorrow, just uh, following up on some of the comments and questions that I didn't get to today. But gosh, I talked a lot faster than I thought I was. I thought I was going to go longer. Does anybody have any questions for me? I don't think so. I can't wait to see this video on the Facebook group since I have no idea what this looks like. And shout out to Jocelyn for staying up late. I know it's um, it's late for you. You're my hero. What is my current fitness goal? Oh, mine? Oh, that's a great question. Well, I'm recovering. Ugh. Restore the use of my arms. So I've got, I've got rehab to do. So I'm, I'm working on restoring my grip. Just to show off a nice gnarly scar on one arm. But restore the use of my arms. And um, for me, it's doing about 20 minutes of mo mobility a day to reduce the pain in my knees and back from the accident. So I was involved in the bicycle accident. So I'm just making sure that my beat up joints are working. It's only been six weeks since the accident. And um, I'm I'm feeling a lot better, but ugh, man, I am still in still in quite a bit of pain. So I'm I'm lubing. Movement is the lubrication for joints. The body balances itself and heals itself while it moves, not at rest. You do have to rest and um, and sleep and and restore yourself. But movement is actually how the body heals itself, which is why movement is so dang important. So. Healing my joints, Jocelyn. Thank you for asking. That's my current fitness goal. And um, I've been sitting around watching a lot of TV, and I've got a little uh, I've got a little pot belly forming from watching too much Ted Lasso and Yellowstone. So I need to look at my diet and, and maybe uh, go a little bit easy on on the booze. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the love. Okay. Well, um, I'm super excited to get into all of the habits, actions, and actual strategies that are going to make you feel better and get you to your goals. So we're going to go deep on that next time. That will be on Tuesday, October 5th at 7 p.m. And we'll go live and they'll post a replay right after that. So uh, if you're if you're not able to be there for that video, make sure you've, you've posted your questions. And I'm going to go into it. I'm going to go along on that one because that's my favorite. I just like teaching, so I'm going to give away all my favorite things. And I hope to see you there. And and if not, uh, fall, you know, catch up on the replay. Till next time, Coach Josh helping you bring out the warrior within. <laughs>